Welcome back to Kyle Army and our coverage of the third round of the Extreme Festival. We now move into the single seaters, the Investcam Formula 1600s. And what a start to the season these guys have had. Brand new cars with wings and slicks. And there you can see them in full flight. Looking forward to seeing all the race action here. Proudly brought to you by Investcam. Julian van der Vaart with two victories in Cape Town is the man to beat. But he has got some very talented youngsters who have come from the karting field and from other categories who have started for the very first time in Formula 1600s. One namely being Stuart White, Alex Gillespie, a usual contender, and Cameron O'Connor, a man who could take the fight to the front end, and he's looking to do just that. Van der Vaart is going to have to keep his eyes on those rearview mirrors as we get ready to go. And it's a terrible start from Van der Vaart. A fantastic start from Gillespie. He pulls out wide. So does Stuart White. Stuart White goes right. Gillespie goes left. And look at Julian Van der Vaart going backwards in a big way. Even Schofield has squeezed through on him. Dean Fent around the outside looking for a way to sneak up ahead. Cameron O'Connor down in fifth place as they come under braking into Crowthorn for the first time. Oh, there's the LT. Lieutenant Colonel Alan Mayer all over the back of that front pack. And Benningfield trying to squeeze through there as well. Looks like he managed just to get ahead of Alan Mayer. It's Stuart White that gets the whole shot and leads into turn one, two, and now into turn three. They come out of barbecue and White trying to get away. Remember, he's just come from international duties at Lamar and done a great job in Formula 4. Can he do the same thing here in Formula 1600? It's a little bit more... Uh, oh, look at that. What a move from Fanavat. Not holding back right from the word go. He made a mistake off the line. And he's trying to rectify that almost instantaneously. He comes up on the back of Gillespie. Gillespie goes defensive. Dean Fenter going def defensive in the background there, keeping out Cam O'Connor. O'Connor and Fent are going to go at it all the way through. And look at that. The old man in the mountains right in the mix in fourth place. Schofield with a fantastic start. Gillespie trying to apply the pressure here. Just has to back out as they go in. Is not going to get the line otherwise as they come out of the S's. Now heading up towards Leokop. See Gillespie trying hard to stay with the pace of Julian van der Vaart. He tried to do that in Cape Town. And van der Vaart left everybody behind. Schofield with Fenter on his tail. Fenter looking for a way through. Cam O'Connor has now moved a little bit away from the second Schofield car. Andrew Schofield. And he's got Benningfield all over the back of him. Good dive on the inside there. Late braking required. I can tell you what that was all about. Stuart White probably not having as many laps around this track as what Julian van der Vaart did. Remember, Julian van der Vaart has spent some time in the Afrix Formula cars and has done lots of laps around here. So it's a little bit of extra track time that's helping him out right now. They come down into Ingwe, the final turn. Stuart White onto the gearbox there, trying to get as much of the slipstream effect as he can. Not easy to do when you've got the wings and slicks on these cars. The slicks help with the, with the traction, but the wings, of course, are going to hinder you and give you a little less of that slipstream effect because if you get in too close, unfortunately, it just causes you to have some problems with the handling. He pulls out just in time. You see, he's used that international experience and the young carter in front of him, multiple karting champion from the, the Western Cape, doing a great job for Race Driver SA. Stuart White for fantastic racing in second place. We're on board with him. Heading up into barbecue. What a great shot as he runs ever so close to the edge. A little bit over, as you can see, these guys sticking to the white lines. Well, only just. They go over a little bit, but just a wheel length. And now coming into Sunset. Oh, let's get that. Formula 1600s in the house at Sunset. It's buried. It's fifth gear. Everything she's got as they go flying through there. And no holds barred. They don't roll off because the wings and, of course, those slicks will just pin them to the circuit. Benningfield with a late outbreaking maneuver, squeezing through. Can he make a way past? Yes, he has. He's got ahead. And Schofield's dropped back. Schofield trying to come back at him, though. Schofield's on the inside. Can he squeeze? No, he can't. Not enough space there. Andrew Schofield at the back out of that one now as they come through the S's. Not too far off the back end of Benningfield. Schofield and Benningfield trying to close down on Cam O'Connor just up the road. Cameron O'Connor there, you can see he's in the shot. Hard on the brakes, Benningfield from Andrew Schofield from Lieutenant Mayer. And uh, Alan Mayer doing such a good job here to run with two very young and very talented drivers. But of course, a stalwart in this class and definitely knows his way. New drivers to the class, of course, are Paige Lindenberg. She joins Donnie Lamola as the uh, fairly fast female team, doing a great job at the back end and getting used to single seaters for the very first time. All right, Cam O'Connor now, slowly but surely closing in on the boss man. Can he find a way past on Schofield? Schofield will be concerned. He knows just how good Cameron O'Connor is. He's only 14 or 15 years of age, so really a youngster in this category, fighting with the contenders that have been around for four or five seasons. Oh, big mistake. Is that Scof? No, yes, it is. It's Andrew Schofield. Schofield getting it completely out of shape here, coming out of the final turn. Let's have a look on board. There you go. Little bit too much on the loud pedal and flipping it out completely. He does get going again and unfortunately drops right out. Eventually going to come through, I think, just for a top 10 finish. 
Oh, and some problems in the back as well as 23 goes sideways. That's Paige Lindenberg getting used to single-seater racing. It's not the same as a big Ford Fairmont, but she certainly is loving life in the Formula 1600s. We're on the final lap, and Cameron O'Connor has squeezed through the on Schofield. Fenter looking to do the same thing as they go into the S's. Dean Fenter looking for a way through. Can he find it? I don't know if he's going to be able to keep get past uh, Ian Schofield. Schofield's going to fight hard. He's let the youngster through. I think he made a slight mistake to open up the door. You don't do that when Cameron O'Connor is around. He will show you just what international karting experience brings along. They are not scared to rub wheels. They're not scared to get in. And they're not scared to take three wins out of three starts. That's exactly what Julian van der Vaart is going to do. Coming to the line, the checkered flag is waiting. And van der Vaart wins out for his third time this season. Stewie White comes through for a great second place. And it's Alex Gillespie who eventually finishes in third place. Cam O'Connor was fourth and Ian Schofield was fifth. What a dice between the two of them. And Laren caught up with Cameron O'Connor to find out how his day had gone. Cameron, a great race and some hard work to overtake Ian Schofield. Yeah, you know, we had a bad start, so we had to come back. And yeah, we did it. Take us through that overtaking maneuver. Well, I came out of sunset and I had a better drive and I just went for the dark one and it paid off. A new car, a new challenge. Yeah, it's completely new. I'm used to saloons, these big cars that break really early, and now I've got to adjust my entire driving style. So it's very different, a lot to learn, but I'm loving it. The action out of Formula 1600 has been world class, and we're looking forward to more of the same now in race number two. Carl Pitzer from Mozambique. He's got a little bit of work to do to catch up to the front end, but he'll definitely be there. Matt Nash working hard there to get some of the cars all sorted and ready to go now for race two. The youngsters and the old guns are going to go at it here once again. Can Gillespie do anything about getting ahead and possibly stealing a win? Another great start from him. A terrible start yet again coming out of Julian van der Vaart. But he won't be too concerned about that because if you see what happened in race number one, it only took him a couple of laps to get back to the front. Let's see if Gillespie can get away. It looks like he might have the whole shot. I don't think Stewie White is going to match him down on the brakes. In fact, he's not going to be matched by Stuart White. He's going to be matched by Julian van der Vaart. Van der Vaart just getting straight back at him. And looks like he might have squeezed through there to take the lead. A great start. We're on board with Stewie White. He didn't have such a good start at all. And you can see he's now trying to find a way through and fight out at the front end. Cam O'Connor got a phenomenal start. He's up in his second. Stuart White is now third place. And looks like Gillespie has been bumped down to fourth. So we're in for an epic battle here. Three of the top carters in the country are now at the front end of Formula 1600s. And they're going to give it everything they can. Benningfield looking to get up there as well. He's just off the back end, fighting hard. A much better start there from Liam Pinar this time out as they come through. Another one of our young carters who stepped up in the Formula 1600s. And now they come flying onto the little short straight between Clubhouse and the S's. You can just see how they line up. Going through there, Van Vat, Stuart White and Cam O'Connor. Cam O'Connor just keeping White at bay for now. Dean Fenter looking for a way through on his ex-teammate there, Gillespie. Top of Leocop. Watch for them to spread out. Watch Gillespie to try and go defensive. No, he just maintains the line. It's too far back there for Dean Fenton to make anything. The Schofield's going at it side by side. Father and son fighting hard. And Andy just running a little bit wide. That's costing him time. You can see with the inside line just ahead of him there, Schofield, Ian that is, got away and left him by about uh, three or four car lengths. Now under breaking, they come to uh, Crocodile. Alan Mayer behind them. Looks like it's also a good start there from uh, Carl Pitzer. A much better run from him. Mark Laugh out of it ever so slightly. Donnie Lamola and Paige Lindenberg with Brendan Tracy at the back of the field. And this is how things are looking so far. Into the sunset here. And you can see the just the sun glistening off the front end of those cars. Difficult to pick them up in that shot. But now you can see them in full, full picture as they come out of the final turn. Across the line and complete the lap. Stuart White, head down, trying to close in on Cam O'Connor. He looks like he might be able to get into the slip here. He's not too far away. Watch, he gets sucked in. There he go. Pulls out. Has he got what it takes on the brakes? He goes late on the brakes, using some international Formula 4 experience and gets up the inside of Cam O'Connor. O'Connor and Stuart White represented RKT at the World Finals last year for karting. And both of these guys will know exactly the kind of skill it takes to get ahead of their rivals and, of course, teammates when they're in go-karts. It's a much better run here from Gillespie as well. The two youngsters fighting hard have slowed each other down ever so slightly, and Gillespie is now back into the hunt. We go on board here with Benningfield, looking for a way through on Scope. Can he do it again? This is where he got it all right. He got it nicely through Sunset. And now will he pull out on the left-hand side and try and outbreak? Oh, what a move there. Absolutely perfection from Bad Benningfield and squeezing through on, on Schofield. And he's got some work to do now. He tries to do the same thing as he did in the previous one. It's almost deja vu there, but very, very close between those two drivers. White has got ahead of O'Connor and now pulled a small margin. O'Connor hasn't got an answer there to shoot White's pace once he's got through. Gillespie now looking to close in. Fenton with problems. 
Oh, that's such a pity. This man is really battling, and uh, the man took car pulling to the sideline there, and that is it for Dean Fenter. Now the man who's gone missing is Nick Adcock. Man all the way from Cape Town, and unfortunately his first race in Formula 1600s hasn't gone his way. Schofield coming straight back at Benningfield. Look how tight it is between these two. Great move here from Andy, looking for a way through. And has he got it? No, he hasn't. He's just been blocking and playing around here. It is so close between the two Schofields and Benningfield. A great dice going on here between those three cars. Further back, Lamola and Paige Lindenberg hanging on for now. And it looks like they're keeping out at this stage. Brennan Tracy at the back end of the field. So it's very close between those drivers at the back as well. Right through the field. You've got two or three cars in little packs fighting hard. Stuart White trying to find Julian Van der Vaart. We're all trying to find Julian Van der Vaart. Even our cameras can't keep up with him. He's so far ahead. This is the third place battle. Cam O'Connor looking for a podium. Can you just imagine? His second race in Formula 1600s and he'll be up there. There's Liam Pinar. He's got a head now. So Pinar squeezing through. As I said, a much better start and a much better race coming out of the youngster. He's now up in the sixth place. O'Connor trying to keep out Gillespie. The flag is waiting. He's only got a couple of corners to go. Come on. Let's see if Cam O'Connor can do this. Gillespie won't be too concerned. He's got a long way in the season. He knows that the youngster has probably got a slightly better car in front of him right now. But Addis Gillespie will be thinking about the next round as they head down to East London Grand Prix circuit. This man will be looking for four out of four, and he's got it. What a start to the season for Julian van der Vaart. That number 42 could possibly be the number one car by the end of the season if he keeps up this kind of pace. Across the line, short shifting, and a little shimmy shuffle as they go across. Well done, Jules. Julian van der Vaart gives his car a big thump there and a well done and a massive effort from the RDSA machine. White in second, O'Connor is third, Gillespie is four, Benningfield in five, Pinot Schofield and Schofield, the top eight. In the championship points, it's now Julian van der Vaart with a massive lead of 10 points over Stuart White. Gillespie is up another 10 points, and he's in third place. And we caught up with Liam Pinar, most improved driver of the day. Liam, a shocking start in race two, but you came through nicely. Yeah, I had a really bad start for both heats, but it was fun passing through Brad and Ian and all of them. Probably the, one of the best overtakes I've ever done in my life. Through with Ian going around the outside at the top of the hill. But other than that, I had a really great day. Julian, another sterling performance this race weekend. It was the perfect weekend for us. Every time we hit the track, we were fastest. All three practice sessions fastest. Got pulled by about 0.6 of a difference. You know, so we, were, we had some real serious pace. Um, got down to a 52 dead, which is a new lap record. So we're really happy with this weekend's pace. It was a really good weekend for us. Join us after the break for some more action from the Motorsport Festival and round three of the Extreme Festival at Kailani.